Hello, it is Friday, October 15th, 2021. I'm Chris Remo, and welcome back to my New York Times crossword Daily Solve. I'm actually quite happy to be back to the New York Times Daily Solve because I, last night, solved, barely solved, the second uh, competition puzzle from the Bosworth's Fall Themeless uh, League. If you're a Patreon subscriber, you may have seen my first solve, the first competition puzzle I solved for the Boss Words competition that's currently ongoing. And I did fine that time, I, uh, but boy, this one last night really very much wrecked me and I'm feeling quite wrung out. It took me, I think, 37 minutes to solve. So if you're a Patreon supporter, you can look forward to that being posted in the next couple days, and I apologize. <laughs> I apologize for my performance. I really hope I do better next week, and I also hope I do better on today's Friday puzzle, which I'm hoping will be something a little bit more um, familiar to me, I suppose, in terms of uh, just getting it solved in a timely fashion. And um, unrelatedly to that, I suppose, actually, I saw a comment that I'd missed a few days ago on a video from Josh, who says, I woke up late on Sunday and was invited to a friend's to socialize. We had a great time, and it was about 10 p.m. UK time before I realized I hadn't done the crossword today. We then scrambled to complete the 25 by 25 grid before the day rolled over to maintain my streak. What are your tips for maintaining a streak for those of us who care? I'm on 60 now. Um, <laughs> Illuminable Force replies by saying, run a daily YouTube series where people literally pay you a few bucks to do so. And honestly, that <laughs> that strategy has worked for me. But seriously, obviously, I'm up to 900 something. I don't remember my current streak, but it's 900 something. And that, I think it was uh, probably in the seven or eight hundreds. I don't remember how long I've been doing this series, but it was certainly at least in the seven hundreds. Uh, I think in the 800s by the time I started doing the series. So obviously I, I had something that was keeping me sticking to my streak for well over a year. And I think past a point, it was sort of self-perpetuating. Uh, although I do remember last New Year's Eve, uh, was <laughs> the years no longer have any meaning, it seems, but this would have been, I suppose, New Year's Eve at the end of 2020. And I do remember sort of panicking when I realized I hadn't yet solved the crossword. And it was one of my fastest solves of whatever day that was that I could, that I can ever remember. It was quite intense. Uh, but I, I mean, I, I broke my streak many times over the years and almost always it was, it would simply come and go. I would just forget about it for a given day and then realize too late that I'd missed my streak and there was nothing I could do about it. And that, I think I rarely, I think when I first got to a hundred was quite significant. And I think that was what made me really uh, decide I'm going to keep this thing going for as long as possible. And the answer, I mean, the reason why I, I don't really know, I think I just have that sort of personality perhaps. But to be honest, if I had to give the single biggest way to keep your street going long term, it's just practice the crossword and get better at solving. I mean, I don't, I don't mean that to be, I don't mean that to be sort of glib or dismissive. It, it's just actually true in my case, the many times that I broke my streak, it's not because I wasn't fast enough at solving the crossword or something. It's just that once you do have enough practice that solving the crossword ends up being sort of a fun little diversion as opposed to something you really struggle with over a couple hours, uh, then maintaining the streaks turns into sort of a nice daily routine as opposed to something that uh, is going to feel like an onerous responsibility or a or something you have to struggle through each day. Because, you know, when, when solving a Saturday puzzle or honestly a Sunday puzzle, even though it's not as difficult, it's just so big. Sunday puzzle is, I would say, by far the biggest challenge to my streak. I mean, it's sort of irrelevant now because I'm doing this series and I, I feel sort of a public responsibility to, to maintain my streak by recording these videos. But when I was doing it purely on my own, you know, those big long Sunday grids, it's it can be a real slog. And so I think just practicing and getting to a point where the, the crossword is, um, it's again, as I say, something that can be 
just a nice daily routine as opposed to something you really have to struggle with. That was the biggest thing that helped me. And that simply took time. I mean, I, I just wouldn't, I wouldn't overly worry about your streak if you can avoid it, because I do think at least in my case, it was often more of a source of, um, well, maybe not a source of, but certainly a result of sort of neurosis as much as, as anything else. And I don't know that I would necessarily need to encourage other people to be signing up for some arbitrary responsibility that in fact has no, no real meaning to your life. But again, I will say that the most straightforward, and maybe this is obvious, but it really is true, the, the easiest, the thing that made it easiest for me to maintain my streak was simply practicing the crossword. And along the path to getting there, I broke a lot of streaks. And, you know, it was sort of, it was irritating at the time, but uh, nothing bad ultimately ever really happened when I broke my streak. So <laughs> that's my answer to that question. I hope that's in some way useful, probably not as much of a silver bullet answer as you, you may have been hoping for. So I apologize for that. But I do have another comment as well from Joel Goldfarb. And this actually deals with yesterday's puzzle. This I, I remember solving yesterday's puzzle, the Thursday puzzle, and came across an organization that uh, supported food establishments or something. I don't remember exactly what the clue was, but anyway, the answer was NRA. And I thought, oh, well, it's probably not the National Rifle Association. And indeed it's not. Joel Goldfarb explains that NRA also stands for National Restaurant Association, kind of like how the CIA is the Culinary Institute of America and the FBI is the Food and Beverage Institute. That's incredible. So there's, I wonder if this is, this, is that a coincidence that these are all food related things and they all match up to, uh, I don't know, covert or sort of pseudo militaristic organizations. That's so odd. Anyway, uh, another thing that I strangely couldn't bring to mind was, as Kathy Swope points out, the name of the poem that came to mind as an example of the word, the preposition, the poetic preposition, air, before, to me. She points out, of course, it is The Night Before Christmas, or A Visit from St. Nicholas, by Clement Clark Moore. Um, <laughs> not really sure why that I struggled to bring that to mind, but thank you, Kathy, for helping me out there. Okay, so let's that was quite a bit of preamble. Let's get on to the Friday puzzle. Could be a tough one, so I should get started, shouldn't I? This was constructed by Ashton Anderson. I don't think I recognize that name. And edited, as always, by Will Shorts. So, are we ready to get started? I say yes. Okay. An enthusiastic ascent. Oh, it could be yeah, but that's sort of generic, isn't it? I'm not really sure about that. Throw on the couch. It could be a throw pillow or a Probably not a throw rug, but a throw cushion, maybe. Uh, I'm not sure, though. Angel said to have visited Joseph Smith. Um, Joseph Smith was a Mormon, I believe. Was it the Angel Mormon, maybe? Could that possibly be the case? That could make enthusiastic ascent, I'm in, maybe. Like Shunga Woodblock Prince. Not sure. Throw on the couch. And what breaks as it first comes out? What breaks as it first comes out? N a news. News breaks as it first comes out. There we go. Important leadership skill. I'm just looking at these crosses quickly. Losing some illusions, perhaps to acquire others, per Virginia Woolf. Growing up, maybe? That would make sense. That would fit the fit the, the rest of the quotation. Cause of an early lead, maybe. Not sure offhand. I wonder if that means in a game or something. Darth Vader's childhood nickname. Oh, oh no, sorry. Actually, I actually weirdly remember the name of this Mormon angel. I don't even know why I know this, but I think it's Moroni. And I think Mormon maybe comes from that. I think Mormon might be a an adjectival form of the angel Moroni, possibly. And I that I was reminded of that because Darth Vader's childhood nickname, Darth Vader was Anakin Skywalker. So Annie was the uh, childhood nickname. That's tough. I wouldn't expect most people to know the angel Moroni who visited Joseph Smith. That is pretty obscure, I would say. Uh, I don't even know how I know that. I mean, it's funny. Anyway, 
throw on the couch. Um, not sure. Like Shungo woodblock prints. Iconic? Might they be icons? I'm not sure. Hardly mainstream. Oh, could be niche. Oh. Oh, an Afghan. Like an Afghan, um, you know, woven um, material. I can't think of words. <laughs> so the enthusiastic ascent is not I'm in, it's amen. And then like Shunga woodblock prints, could they be erotic perhaps? I don't know what these are. Important leadership skill. Oh, foresight, maybe. So that could be erotic. A hot streak? No, that doesn't fit. The early lead, I thought maybe could be a hot streak. To model for is to sit for. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, could there be a rebus? I'd be very surprised if there were a rebus on Friday. A rebus, if you're not familiar, is when you put multiple letters in a single cell. So this could be, for instance, hot streak like that, although I don't I don't think that's what this is. Um, those are more associated when the puzzle has some sort of theme surrounding it, and Friday and Saturday puzzles are generally themeless. Um, okay, have we looked at this yet? No, we haven't. Certain service. The pink print wrapper, I'm not sure. Belligerent, slangy, could be aggro, as in aggravated. Put a sock in it. Shut your pie hole? Wow, I really went on a limb there. I mean, shut your mouth was obviously my first thought, but that wasn't enough letters. I mean, this is pretty speculative. I, there are probably other seven letter words that could fit here. That was just the first one that came to mind, but we can maybe try and, yeah, I don't, I don't think it's this. Um, well, maybe actually. Shukiro of NPR, if that were I, I mean, I thought that looked kind of weird, but it could be, I was going to say Ira, but that's the other way around. Ari, is that, could that be? Um, crowdsourced Q&A site. Crowdsourced Q&A site. Oh, actually, I think I know this. Cora. Yeah, Cora's a website on which you can ask questions of, I don't know, seemingly any topic imaginable, and people can answer them, and then people vote for the better answers. And so that's the crowdsourced part, the answering and voting. All right, so what is this? Cutesy, I beg your pardon. If this if this is indeed a cue, which I suspect it is, that that constrains this a fair amount. Cutesy, I beg your pardon. Excuse me? Does that fit? How would that be spelled? I guess squeeze as in to literally squeeze. So this, I mean, this could be pie hole because that, that does fit the I. Let's see if this A-E works. Joyous song. Oh, a pian. Yeah, a sort of <laughs> almost an ode that is sung. An ode, the most common form of poetry referenced in the crossword. And it's musical, perhaps. Maybe it's musical equivalent. I don't know that a pian is really necessarily musical. I mean, it, it, it doesn't have to be a song. So, yeah, that, that's, I, was going, I was going a bit further afield, but um, fair enough. Home with a view could be an airy um, bird's home built up high on a, high often on a cliff, cliff face or, or cliff uh, top, something like that. Unembellished as the truth could be the naked truth. What air is not for an anaerobe. So an anaerobe, as opposed to an aerobe, doesn't breathe air, so it is not a need. I see. And if one is appearing ill or exhausted, maybe, say one is wan, perhaps, and xenomorphs, for example, I think that's what they call the creature from the film Alien. So what... Alien life, maybe? Is that what that means? Is that actually a generalized term? I always thought that was sort of made up for that film, but maybe not. Or not even made up for the film, but sort of made up <laughs> surrounding the film, because they certainly don't say that in the movie, I don't think. 
Okay, loud bugling, e.g. could be a din, a loud noise. Concerning, I don't know about this alien life. I might delete that until I have a better idea. I'm sort of solving this in a relatively haphazard way here. Uh, maybe I should try and fill in some of these cells up at the top. Oh, look at this. It's not a hot streak, the early league lead. It is a hot start. There we go. And then have we looked at this yet? I don't think so. Author who wrote, The Heaven Tree of Stars Hung with Humid Night Blue Fruit. The Heaven Tree of Stars Hung with... Yeah, I don't think I know this. What is this? 500 letters. Um, I am not sure offhand. Certain service. Certain service. Hmm. Task? It doesn't really seem right. Certain service makes it seem, it says certain, which makes you think it'll be something pretty specific, not something generalized like task. But I'm not sure. Sorry, I'm just trying to think. Sometimes when I'm thinking, I look down at the keyboard, which, yeah, maybe someone could, you could think of that as cheating, maybe just sort of, but I don't think so. I'm just looking at the letters because I'm trying to imagine what could fit in here. Um, but I'm not having any luck. This strategy only rarely bears fruit, I must admit, but I do it frequently nonetheless. Oh, oh, actually, no. Maybe it's a mass, a, ser a church service, a Catholic church service, the mass. Or Anglican, not just Catholic. Um, oh, maybe this is Nicki Minaj, the pink print rapper. I don't know that song. Um, seems pretty plausible. Author who wrote, okay, right. So, oh, Joyce, perhaps. That's the sort of weird construction that you could imagine coming from Joyce. And to composer Anton, who used the 12-tone technique. Oh, um, boy, I really should know this, but it's not coming to mind right offhand. I hope I see it with some more crosses. Yeah, that's irritating. I'm going to move on. Main component in the Chinese street food, Jan Bing. Um, I don't know. I don't think. And here we have Pluto, Pluto, e.g. It could be an orb. Often orb is used in the crossword to refer to planetary bodies or other celestial bodies. Um, what is this main component? Is it a crepe? I don't know. Oh, cream, maybe. I'm not sure. Let's keep let's keep looking around. Um, the promised land, Zion. And sauce whose name derives from pound in Italian. No, that would be pesto. I haven't made pesto in a long time. I used to make it frequently. John B. Goodenough is the only person ever to get one at age 97. John B. Good enough. That's an incredible name. It's, his name is sort of a sentence. Okay, let's see. What is this? To get a what? The oh, the oldest. Sorry, did I say only? I can't. I think it. I, I may have said oldest, but I may have said only. But either way, I think I was thinking only. The oldest person ever to get one at age ninety-seven. I'm not sure. Let's keep looking around. Heaven forbid. Looks like maybe hope not could be here. Oops. No. Um, heaven forbid. I mean, it's got to have an I here, right? Something I hope not. Um, don't know. What about this? November 11th honoree. I'm not sure right off the top of my head. Children's classic originally written in German. Children's classic originally written in German. I don't know. And here we have a double curve. I and mean, it could be an S shape. That's pretty straightforward. Maybe this is a crepe. The Chinese street food component. And then... Boy, do I not know this 12-tone technique composer, Anton? Maybe I don't. I hope I recognize it once I see it, but who knows? What a shocker. Um, 
So if this were, oh, actually, yes, if this were crepe, then this would be a P, which would lead to the word surprise, which fits shocker. What a shocker. Something surprise. Big surprise. Oh, I see. It's sort of sarcastic. Big surprise. What a shocker. So the November 11th honoree is an XGI. So that could be, is that Veterans Day? That's plausible. Children's classic originally written in German. What is this? What is it? I don't know what that is, I don't think. Honest to goodness. Um, not sure. Singer Mitchell could be Joni Mitchell. Oh, Heidi? That rings a bell. I don't think I, I grew up with Heidi. But I know that it's a children's character, but I can't remember what she did or who she is. <laughs> Honest to goodness. And it looks like a German name. Honest to goodness. Let's see. Um... Don't know. Fall apart. And what is this? J. J might be helpful. Zippy resort rental. Zippy resort rental. So some sort of vehicle. Jet ski, maybe. It's a vehicle that starts with an I, a J. Cart contents. This starts with an I. Cart contents. Cart. Could this be a sort of online shopping cart, maybe? Or something else? I don't know. An ingot? <laughs> Mine cart? Don't know. Kind of moment worth recording. Oh, a Kodak moment. This is sort of an outdated reference, I suppose. The Kodak Film Company, I think. I don't, maybe, maybe this is still a marketing component of theirs. I don't know, but they used to have the idea of a Kodak moment, a sort of memorable moment you'd photograph. A bit of deception. A bit of deception. There are more than a few bits of deception in that boss words puzzle, uh, competition puzzle I solved last night. Boy, oh boy, that was tough. Lodge group. Oh, it could be the Elks. It's sort of a, um, I don't know, a civic society. Is, um, what do you call this sort of thing? A fraternal organization, I guess, is what the Elks are, like the Rotary Club or something, I think. Okay, to tell all could be to spill. A bit of deception. A bit of deception. What is that? I'm not really sure offhand. And then does this help at all? Honest to goodness. Oh, a bona fide... And then cart contents, ideas? Doesn't seem right. Oh, here, we haven't looked at this. Candy cooked until it reaches the hard crack stage. Um, toffee, right? And then a bit of deception. Bit of deception. Flack? Flab? Bit of deception. I'm sorry, this is, there's so few things this could be. You've probably gotten there already, and I'm, <laughs> I'm not seeing it. Oh, flam is in flim flam, maybe? Maybe the deception is flim flam, and a bit of it is just flam, although I feel as though if that were the case, that might have a question mark. So maybe flam is a word in its own right, and it's actually just one with which I was unfamiliar. So card contents could be items. Boy, that's more generic than I was expecting, but I suppose you do put items in a cart. For something to fall apart, it will go to pot. And then, oh, I see. Here we have heaven forbid is God, I hope not. That's actually pretty clever because God ties to heaven. So that's actually quite well clued. And I didn't really pick up on that connection initially. Okay, let's see. Uh, what is this? Oh, Webern. Okay, Anton Webern. Yes, I do know this composer, but I had a little, um, flew out of my brain. And like a spitball is wadded, wadded up, a little piece of paper wadded up. I did it. Ta-da, I guess. Like Mars. Is this Mars the Roman god or Mars the planet or Mars the candy bar, maybe? Uh, probably Mars the planet, actually. Arid. Dry. Could be that. That seems right. Mars is legendarily arid, right? Packs down could be tamps down. Classic neo-grotesque typeface, I think is aerial typeface. Um, grotesque is one of those typeface terminologies that is very odd. And I, I need to actually do some reading about why it's, why the term grotesque is used because you, you see the word grotesque and at least in sort of idiomatic English speech, 
grotesque refers to something disgusting and uh, it's, it's sort of appalling. You shy away from it because it's, it's, it's so revolting. But that's um, the term grotesque in typefaces has a very different meaning and actually refers to what, what I think most people refer to as fairly mundane fonts often. And I, uh, I don't entirely know what the etymology is there, so I should read about it. Anyway, maybe someone will tell me in a comment. I always enjoy that. A psychological trick could be a mind game. It's just the beginning of the story. It could be page one. A sneaky sort. Um, a slider, I suppose. Maybe, is that? I don't know. That, that seems, that's totally wrong. What am I doing? Gloomy and drab could be dingy. And a sneaky support, a sneaky sort, a sly dog. That's much better. Okay, sticky stuff is goo and a sudden sensation is a pang. All right, so all we've got left here now is the southeastern little corner. I don't know what John B. Goodenough got at age 97 uniquely. Joint application. With this little pun indicator, I suspect this means something you apply to a joint, maybe to deal with aches and pains. I'm not sure. And if that's the case, I don't even know that that would need the question mark because it is it would literally be true. So maybe the maybe the pun is actually maybe it's actually a little further afield than that. We'll have to see. Tempt could be entice. Took inventory. I wonder if this means stole or shoplifted. I'm not sure. Ambient, oh, here we go. <laughs> Ambient one, music for airports musician. This, of course, would be one of the only musicians who exists in the New York Times crossword universe, along with, I guess, Anton Webern, but this would be Brian Eno, a classic three-letter musician, along with Yoko Ono, O-N-O, another classic three-letter musician. Uh, music for Airport is probably one of his most famous recordings, actually. To approach could be head up to, maybe. Not sure, so let's look at the crosses here. Concerning... I don't know if that's a... Uh, strutting one's stuff could be working it, colloquially. A Animorphs, e.g., right, so it is an alien life. Alien... Oh, right, and it is plural, which did fit life, because life can be a collective noun. But alien... Well, maybe it's not an S. Maybe it's another... Maybe it's something C-E, because that could also be plural or collective. Alien... I don't know what this is. Let's keep looking. Looked at suspiciously. Eyed. You could eye someone suspiciously. Took inventory. Well, now that it's took and there's a D here and a T here, I sort of suspect there will be an E here to make this past tense. Uh, boosted? No, that's not enough letters. Or rather, that's too many letters for the number of cells. Uh, what is this? Joint application, right? Oh, Ben Gay. That's a... That's something that you apply to joints, I think, joint application. I mean, I think, I really do think you could fairly clue this without a question mark. It would make it a much more difficult clue, but you could do it. Maybe on a Saturday, you would leave out the question mark so that, as a reminder, the question mark indicates that there's some kind of pun going on. And I guess my my take on that is if if it's something you could say reasonably accurately without it be without having to essentially distort the meaning of the word from its literal meaning that's when you really need a question mark this is an arguable case because ben gay literally is an application onto a joint it's something you apply to a joint literally so but you know i understand why the question mark is there because you it's maybe not exactly how you'd say it and joint application does have other clear meaning. So I think it just depends on how difficult you want the clue to be. Anyway, let's move on. Oh, this must be a Nobel Prize. So I wonder in what area John B. Goodenough excelled to deserve a Nobel Prize. I don't think I know this person's name. I'll have to look that up. All right. Took inventory. Oh, I see. Looted. So it is essentially stole. And then to approach is to head into. Is that approach? I suppose it could be in some usage in some some usages of approach because you could approach an airport in a plane in which case you are heading into the airport as opposed to heading up to which I think is more commonly what approach means. 
So concerning is in re OIC, and then xenomorphs is an alien race. So there we go. Well, as I was hoping, this was a much more pleasant solve for me than that boss words um, competition puzzle. You can, you can, uh, I, my only consolation is that most of you will not see that that solve because it's for uh, <laughs> Patreon supporters only. So I'm sorry that I keep talking about it because it's something that most people won't see, but I did find it, uh, I did find it quite, it made quite the impression on me. And this is exactly what I was looking forward to, which was a tough puzzle, but one that I basically know how to solve. Uh, this I think could be quite tough for a lot of people though. I do think I was sort of lucky in this puzzle to some degree. I think weirdly knowing the name of this Mormon angel was quite helpful to me early on, even though I got it wrong initially, um, even just having those initial letters was helpful and then uh, fixing it up. But this was tough. I do think this was tough. I got lucky maybe with some of these long answers, like shut your pie hole and excuse me. I mean, this isn't a themed puzzle. It's a Friday puzzle, but excuse me, big surprise and God, I hope not. They don't really fit any specific uh, theme or category of speech, I don't think, but they sort of loosely, these are loosely all exclamations, I suppose. And same with shut your pie hole. I mean, these are all, these are all colloquial ex, uh, exclamations in English. They're casual speech and phrases as opposed to, to words or compound nouns. They're spoken. So, in, and I sort of like that. I mean, I think this is maybe maybe my favorite category of themeless, which is that you, there actually is maybe the lightest touch of a theme. There's something that helps tie the puzzle together and give it an identity, but it doesn't tread into full on themed territory. So I sort of enjoy that. Again, I do suspect this is probably going to be a tough puzzle for some people. I mean, things like xenomorphs, I don't know. I'm actually very curious to know if this word has any meaning outside of the film Alien. I don't, maybe it does actually, I don't know. But I always thought it was a made up term. So that, that could be tough for people, I would assume. Kodak moment, I don't know how much, I don't know salience that has to people under a certain age really. Uh, this Nobel Prize thing is, pr is pretty interesting and it took me quite a long time to get it, but I think it's it's reasonable. Nobel is a is a notable thing for someone to get. so. Probably, I could imagine having gotten it earlier, but I certainly didn't. Ben Gay might be tough. I don't know where, I don't know in what percentage of the world Ben Gay is sold. I have no idea how well known that is. Um, yeah, oh, Ve uh, Veyburn. <laughs> I mean, I can't really count this as something that helped me out, even though I'm aware of this person, because I, it took me until the very last letter to get it. That said, it was helpful to get that very last letter W um, for like a spitball being wadded. Um, anyway, yeah, probably a tough puzzle. I think it it suited me well, so I was a bit fortunate. Do let me know how you fared with this puzzle. I'd be curious. And uh, if you enjoyed this video, please do subscribe. Subscribe to the channel. If you're if you're new, then you should know that these come out every morning. Well, they come out every morning UK time, which means if you're in North America, pretty much any time you wake up, hopefully they will be either already released or very soon released. And if you think you know someone who might like this, need some, they need some help getting excuse me, pass this video along or maybe pass the series along. They might like it. You never know. Uh, I've heard from people who I've heard from essentially every category of person with respect to the crossword. People who are longtime crossword solvers who enjoy the puzzle for fairly, the video for fairly straightforward reasons. People who used to solve the crossword and have returned to it. I get, hear from those people fairly frequently, but also people who um, don't solve the crossword, but just like to, um, I guess probably, in, I don't entirely know, but maybe to encounter the words or to, to uh, learn the sort of arbitrarily arranged facts and etymologies and vocabulary because it's it, the crossword has a very broad spread in that regard anyway maybe let someone know or just let your online community know if you if you uh reside somewhere online 
And finally, if you particularly enjoy this series and you would like to help contribute to its online sustainability, consider uh, contributing to the Patreon campaign over at patreon.com slash daily solve, which is also linked in the description field underneath each video. And I won't belabor this because I've already talked about the Patreon a fair amount because of that boss words thing, but that is where you'll see my my very stumbling solve sometime in the next couple days, as well as other bonus content, such as this month's New York Times bonus puzzle, the World Space Week crossword that I posted a few days ago, and my weekly mini puzzle speed solves, as well as special access to the Discord chat server where people are constructing some really impressive crosswords. That's been a wonderful emergent phenomenon over on the Discord server. So head over there if, you, if that's interesting to you, if you might be interested in constructing your own crosswords or helping people construct theirs, giving them feedback. Uh, and you get special access to that chat server through the Patreon, even though it is also free to join for people generally. And finally, some people, depending on their level of contribution, uh, also get special recognition at the end of these videos, and that's going to happen right now. I would like to thank Ernest B. Ramo and as always, the inestimable Hood Monster for their very generous support on uh, helping keep this series going. So thank you, Ernest. Thank you, Hood Monster. I do very much appreciate it. And if you would like to become one of those people, head over to the Patreon campaign, patreon.com slash daily solve. Anyway, with that, this video is probably running a bit long. I should wrap it up. I'll be back tomorrow for the Saturday puzzle very possibly the most difficult crossword of the week, at least that tends to be the case. Uh, another themeless puzzle. So join me for that. I hope you do. I hope to see you there. And until that point, please do have an excellent remainder of your Friday. Take care. Mm -hmm.